In another video, we were talking about the geometric series sum equations, and I mentioned one as being a sneak peek uh, to a future unit we would be working on, and it was to do with loan amounts and loan payments based on you know your interest rates. And I said I would show how we derive that equation, so that's what I want to do today. So this is what I call the geometric series mortgage problem. So I'm going to define some things. I'm going to say L is equal to your loan amount. So that's how much money you're borrowing. I is equal to the monthly interest rate. N is equal to the number of months. And P is equal to the monthly payments. Now with all this in mind, I want to think about what would be happening if I was only making one payment. Well, if I was only making one payment, then if you took the loan and you multiplied it by 1 plus i, that would be equal to what the payment would be, right, after one month. So you get a loan, and then a month later you make a payment to pay the whole thing back. It's just the loan amount plus the interest over one month. So you could rewrite this actually as L times 1 plus I minus P equals 0. Right? You can put that in a bracket like that. So that's if I made one payment. Right? This is for one payment. Now what if the condition stated that you were going to make two payments? Well, if there were two payments, you'd have something like this. You'd have this previous thing happening. right? You'd have L times 1 plus I minus P, but that would be multiplied by 1 plus I and then minus P, like this. That would equal 0 because the payment would equal the loan amount times the interest for one month minus a payment times, because now whatever's left is going to be 1 plus the interest amount again because both these P's should be the same, right? With loans, you're making the same payment each month. So this is for two payments. So you make a payment once, and then whatever's left, that's what this represents. You multiply that by the interest again for another month, and that's equal to P. And then you put the P on the left, just like we did up here. So that is representative of the situation when we're making two payments to pay off a loan. Now, obviously, when you take out a loan, you're not paying it back with one or two payments. You know, it goes on for quite a long time. And so the general form of this would be if you had L times 1 plus I minus P, like that, times 1 plus I minus P, like that, times 1 plus I minus P, like that, times another 1 plus I. It just goes on forever here. And on the left here, you know, this is, this is an infinite uh, number of brackets, right, or parentheses, because it's just, you're putting more and more and more and more, and it's always going to equal zero, right, because at the end of the day, you've paid off the loan and the interest. And so the question here is, how could you find P, right? How could you find the amount that you need to pay, given, you know, what the loan is, uh, what the monthly interest rate is, and what the number of months is? How could you find P? Well, let's do an example. Let's say N is equal to 1. Well, we already said that if there's one payment, you know, you have L1 plus I minus P equals 0, and you can move P back to the other side, right? You could say P is equal to L1 plus I, like that. And from this, you could solve for L, right? Divide by 1 plus I, so P over 1 plus I is equal to L. So the loan amount is equal to P divided by 1 plus I. Now, if N was equal to 2, then if you have what we defined earlier for two payments, it would be L times 1 plus I minus P, like that, times 1 plus I minus P, and that would all be equal to zero, right? That's for two payments. Now, if you try to solve for P in this case, it's a little trickier, right? You move the P to the left side, so P is equal to L 1 plus I minus P, 1 plus i, like that, and then you'd say, okay, well now I got to divide both sides by 1 plus i, so p over 1 plus i 
equals L times 1 plus I minus P, like that. And then you'd say, okay, I want to bring that P to the other side as well, right? Get rid of those brackets, bring the P to the other side. So P plus P over 1 plus I equals L 1 plus I. Then you could divide both sides by 1 plus I to find L. So you'd get P over 1 plus I plus P over this 1 plus I. We're going to add another 1 plus I. That's going to be 1 plus I squared equals L. So now for two payments, L is equal to this. Well, you can start to notice a pattern, right? If we do n equals 3, so there's three payments to re repay the loan, then your loan is going to equal p over 1 plus i plus p over 1 plus i squared plus p over 1 plus i cubed. So really this is looking like a geometric series, right? Where every time, each term, you multiply by 1 over 1 plus i to get to the next term. And we can write it like that, right? We can say that therefore, if n is equal to n, you know, whatever n is, right? Whatever the number of n is, then your loan would equal p over 1 plus i plus p over 1 plus i squared plus, and that would keep going until you get to p over 1 plus i to the n, right? So however, however many payments you're going to have, it all depends, right? So with that in mind, you could say, therefore, L is equal to P times, so you just factor a P out of this whole thing, right? 1 over 1 plus I plus 1 over 1 plus I squared, all the way to 1 over 1 plus I to the N, just like that. This is a geometric series, right? To get from this term to this term, you multiply by 1 over 1 plus i. That's why we get 1 plus i squared on the bottom. You do the same thing to get to the next term and the next term. So this is a geometric series. So what can we say about this? Well, we can recall that when we want to find the sum for a geometric series, what do we do? Well, we said that s is equal to r to the 1 plus r to the 2 plus r to the 3. You know, that just keeps going until you get to r to the n. And if you multiply that by r, and you write it down here, you would get r squared plus r cubed plus, you know, r to the 4. That would keep going until you get to the r n plus 1. And a lot of these terms would cancel, right? This r to the n would cancel with the term before this one. There's another r to the n here. Those would cancel. These would, you know, everything cancels out. All you're left with is r to the 1 and that, right? When you subtract these, that's what I'm doing here. I'm subtracting. That's why those cancel out. And so you'd be left with, on the left-hand side, s minus r at s equals r to the 1 minus r to the n plus 1, right, because we're subtracting. On the left, you factor out your s, you get 1 minus r equals r minus r n plus 1, divide both sides by 1 minus r, so therefore s is equal to r minus r to the n plus 1 over 1 minus r. Now we've talked about this derivation before, right? It's often written as s is equal to a 1 minus r uh, to the n divided by 1 minus r, right? It's usually written like this, but now in this case we just have r's because we didn't multiply them all by a when we did this process, right? And so we can say, well, if this is the sum, right, then therefore, right, this is, if this is the sum, this is the sum of just that one component up here, um, this inside part, right, where you just have r and then r squared, right, and it continues. So if that's the sum of that, then we can just replace it, right? I can say that L is equal to P times the sum, which is just this, right? So R minus R N plus 1 over 1 minus R. Right, that's your equation. And likewise, if you decide to rearrange this to solve for P, you could say that P is equal to L times the opposite of this, 1 minus R over r minus r to the n plus 1. So if you know you're taking out a loan, right, so if you know what the interest rate is, you can calculate r, right, the rate that we're multiplying by each time, n, the number of payments that are going to be, and l, the original, you know, loan amount. If you know all that, you can calculate it and figure out what your payments will be, thanks to the geometric series summation. Now, how do you find r, right, because r is not the rate, r is the number you're multiplying by each time. Well, r is 1 over 
1 plus i, with i being the interest rate, right? So you have to know this in order to find r. Now let's do an example. I'll show you exactly how we do this. So let's say um, a loan is going to be $200,000. So you want to borrow $200,000. And you're told that the interest rate on this loan is 0.5% compounded monthly. Okay? Compounded monthly. And we know that it's going to be paid back over 30 years. So that's in the conditions of the loan. You pay this back over 30 years. Question is, how much is the monthly payment? Right? What are your payments equal to each month? So what do we do? Well, first I would say let's find R. Right? Let's find the number that we multiply by each time, the common ratio we call that. Right? That's going to be 1 divided by 1 plus I, which in this case is 0 0.5. 0, 0, 0.005. I'm putting 0, 0, 0.005 instead of 0 0.5 because 0 0.5 is the percentage. I want to write that percentage as a decimal, so 0 0.005. Okay, so don't forget that. That's very important. This now equals 0 0.995. Okay, so we can now plug in everything we have into the equation. So P equals L. L is 200,000 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.995 divided by 0 0.995 minus 0 0.995 to the exponent. Well, what's the exponent here? Well, it's the number of payments. How many payments do we have? Well, they said 30 years. 30 years times 12 months, so we can figure out the number of months, is going to be 360 months. right? So I plug in here 360 plus 1, so 361, just like that. And then you can calculate this, and you're going to get $1,199.10. So your payments are nearly $1,200 a month for 30 years to pay back $200,000.